enchantée. Trends is a podcast series dedicated to the trends and news in the finance sector. Launched by Soper Banking Software, this series involves experts discussing the hot topics in the industry. My name is Maya Lawrence, and today we're recording the second episode of Fen Trends with Bruno Cambunet so that we can delve into the subject that is causing a lot of discussion, open banking. Hello, Bruno. Hey, man. Bruno, to start, thank you, of course, for being with us. Um, you are currently the head of research at Soper Banking Software, which means your mission is to identify at an early stage the areas uh, to invest in and to shape SBS's strategy and market positioning. I know firsthand that you're passionate about how digital transformation is reshaping the economy, and you're particularly fascinated by the potential that data openness offers, notably in educating everyone about finance. You're actively involved in various organizations, such as the Global Competitiveness Cluster Finance Innovation, uh, the standardization body, the Berlin Group, and within the European Commission. So thank you again for being with us. It's a, a great honor to have you here. Um, in the previous episode, we went back to the early 2000s to narrate the genesis of open banking. Um, but now let's talk about where we are headed today. In this episode, we are going to hear from you about the limitations of open banking uh, by discussing ecosystems. Um, and I believe you're going to share with us a little bit of information about how data sharing has enabled real-time collaboration between banks and fintechs. And then also you will tell us why it is necessary for us to move towards open finance. <laughs> So I'm going to ask the first question then. In your opinion, Bruno, what are the opportunities and the challenges uh, that real-time collaborative work uh, raise in the financial sector? Real-time and collaboration are bringing two major things. It's data accuracy, um, because one player does not rely on only the data he may have in their system, but also leverage collaboration in order to get over data. This brings accuracy. Real time uh, is also bringing accuracy in terms of time, meaning freshness, mm -hmm. freshness of assessment. And uh, the obvious benefits, I, I remember some um, players in credit, for mm -hmm. example, saying that open banking regulation, PSD2, has been a revolution, not an evolution, but a revolution mm. in, credit, uh, in, in, in credit. And the reason is quite simple, uh, actually. As, uh, one, n n number one, the um, credit worthiness or mm -hmm. financial health mm -hmm. of a uh, company or um, an individual m might be assessed, not only real time, so mm -hmm. very quickly, mm -hmm. but also uh, we can assess into more detail um, how such a person or ch such an enterprise is financially healthy, mm -hmm. meaning managing his finance or mm -hmm. her finance uh, in, in a way which is secure, secure for a credit institution mm -hmm. to provide uh, so some money or for a for fund, um, you know, for a CV or for a fundraiser uh, to, to, to be able to provide mm -hmm. this, this fund to an enterprise or whoever. And, <coughs> and, and, and this means that, um, you know, I, 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 I would say that <coughs> there is an over angle of this. It's that inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is a very strong benefit. I mean that in the past, <laughs> we can already say in the past, mm -hmm. you were allocated a, a credit mm -hmm. depending on the fact or not that you have a long-term or permanent c contract with an employer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, because this was a kind of guarantee mm. that you would have regularly on your account enough money in order to reimburse a credit. Mm -hmm. But this was at no absolutely not linked to the way such people owning such long-term or permanent contract would behave mm -hmm. in terms of financial. Mm. And uh, there are numbers of um, you know, temporary workers mm -hmm. or in the gig economy, generally mm. speaking, Mm -hmm. and are really reliable, right? Uh, which were not, you know, accessible, out, uh, right. ac mm -hmm. could not access to such capabilities mm. 
Now this is the case. They can access. Mm -hmm. So inclusion is also, I, I think, one of the opportunity uh, for, for, for this. Right. Uh, now the challenges are behind collaborative. Collaboration means sharing data, sharing mm -hmm. uh, maybe services. Uh, it's a matter of trust. It's a matter of uh, security, you know, uh, who is who, um, and uh, making sure that uh, the... Um, um, everybody has, uh, everybody involved into any transaction has the right to do it. Is, mm -hmm. is the right person, and uh, are well identified, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is the, let's say the, the, the general, let's say challenges that we may find already. You know, in the uh, uh, anti money laundering and the other mm -hmm. uh, other other thing like this. Uh, but collaboration is also that um, you know cooperation so making mm -hmm. every player ready to cooperate mm -hmm. in some segments some mm -hmm. some situation uh, for specific customers while on others they are against and maybe competitive so um, the competition uh, level playing field is changing gears it's, mm. it's, 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 it should be less on that exchange and mm -hmm. those layers or data standards and things like this it should be on the business and on the added value uh, on top of this that everyone can bring. So this is certainly one major play uh, challenge that is not yet fully overcome. Mm. Okay. What they can bring is obviously the technical savviness. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and tech savviness is, um, especially for f fintech um, software provider, mm -hmm. is really to focus on the business use cases mm -hmm. the customer wants mm. and to leverage their tech f savviness in order to better address such mm -hmm. business use cases. So um, I, I, I would say the, um, um, uh, the, the, the role of the fintechs is, is really to be focused, mm -hmm. focused on uh, added value on specific situations and being able to identify those situations and then to provide the right services with the correct customer experience, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and, and, and this is it. I mean, focus meaning being able to test quickly, to mm -hmm. pilot, to learn, mm -hmm. to adjust, and to stay focused. And, and uh, th this, this is it now. There, there are specific, w specific domains where FinTech is ap ap applicable or should be used. Mm -hmm. When we are talking of tech savviness, we can t think about artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. you know, how to leverage artificial intelligence technology mm -hmm. uh, in order to improve uh, bank efficiency mm -hmm. or in order to, um, we, we, we talked uh, about the credit worthiness mm -hmm to better identify the profile and, and better shape, you know, a tailored and personalized offering for such uh, or su such or such uh, customer. Mm -hmm. And um, credit worthiness in some situation means something else. And in other credit worthiness, same name in other situations. So FinTech will have a focus on one thing and will do it perfectly because mm -hmm. this is their added value. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think, yeah, the, the FinTech is, is really here. Um, and and as of today, you know, if I, if I would um, focus on something, I would like, you know, uh, fintechs, the, the, the one who are focusing on the winning trio, meaning artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. enhancement, uh, privacy enhancement mm -hmm. technologies, as well as data standardization. You know, when you have this, mm. then you can make sure that you can leverage mm. open financial data mm -hmm. uh, to be leverage in order to uh, support and gear it, uh, personalized offer, personalized, mm. um, uh, tailored, well, specifically tailored, uh, tailored offering and, um, and yeah, teasing uh, mm -hmm. to the specific customers in the specific situations that they are targeting. Okay. I, I think that brings us perfectly into the next question that I have, which is about the collaboration between fintechs and banks um, and creating new and open, open, open offerings mm. for the future. So what are the ones that you think will be the next major initiatives for banks and fintechs in creating these new offers that are really geared towards kind of, I think what you're saying too, is a customer, uh, okay. good customer experiences. I, I would say there are three level, mm -hmm. uh, could be taken as short, mid and long term, but mm -hmm. it's really three angles or levels. Mm -hmm. uh, the number one is all what is day to day finance, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 
how to pay, how to best pay, how to choose the best payment instrument and to automate this uh, according to uh, the one who is traveling or who is buying the uh, shop mm. uh, in, in the street mm -hmm. close to his habitation, etc. Um, so um, this includes also, you, you know, um, all, all, all what he'll say, you know, payment by link, you know, you flash a QR code and mm -hmm. bing bingo, you, 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 you mm -hmm. get paid uh, or, or brought some money to a friend or to someone mm -hmm. in the street, whatever. So this is the basic, let's say, right. the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. financial uh, services. Then comes uh, the, the uh, services which are more ad advanced, mm -hmm. um, like the credit. Right. Well, cr credit is uh, ob obviously one thing and there is a lot as I mentioned already, so I'm not going to repeat um, <laughs> uh, to, to do in this uh, in this domain. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the, the um, maybe the most advanced uh, layer is about financial well-being, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. And under this umbrella, there is uh, tons of things, uh, and we go way beyond what open banking has been focusing on, which is only payment, uh, in, in order to address the uh, wealth savings. Um, maybe insurance to some extent, and mm -hmm. this is where certainly open finance is, is, going, is going to bring more. So this is wh where I think the, uh, the um, capability of fintechs to be focused on some spe specific stuff and to test and learn on this can bring value to the, to, to the banks, which are usually more you know, spread on across various, various mm -hmm. uh, so, so solutions and not specifically focused on one specific situation of a customer. Okay. <coughs> um, so we talked about the fintechs and we talked about the banks. Um, I want to talk a little bit about other players, too. So I have a specific question for you about how you think that banks and fintechs um, and something like utility providers or other companies that are kind of like uh, even, even more different can prepare themselves for the future of open banking or open finance. Where do these other kind of companies huh. come in and how does open banking or open finance touch them and how can it be helpful for them? I think that the banks mm -hmm. are very aware that value creation will go through collaboration, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I would refer to our um, survey that we're running every year, which mm -hmm. is the DBX. And um, by the way, it's going to be published for uh, year 2023 in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> This is the number one, because what we have seen, at least over the last two um, release of this uh, digital banking maturity assessment, mm -hmm. is that uh, banks are more and more convinced, and financial players are more and more convinced that uh, collaboration is the only way for mm -hmm. collaboration, mm -hmm. uh, for creating value. And, and that's um, not saying they are under or minimizing the risk and the change mm -hmm. in regards to competition, uh, because competing is uh, something not easy to, to, to do, uh, especially in the finance market, which is not used at all mm -hmm. to, to do this. Uh, but you mentioned utilities. That's very interesting, because, um, <coughs> well, y utilities, utility provider are interested with the basic services mm -hmm. that I mentioned in your previous questions. Mm -hmm. uh, they are looking for, um, you know, s signing a contract and being regularly pay paid mm -hmm. for the consumption of telephone, water, mm -hmm. electricity, mm -hmm. gas, right? <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and, and they need to, to be paid I in a way where they are not taking a risk, mm -hmm. like with the direct debit in Europe, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, there is always a risk that the, uh, the payer uh, will contest mm -hmm. uh, a, a s something and will block uh, or being reimbursed and, and then comes lots of hurdles. Mm -hmm. no, not saying he should not, but yeah, this is so th this th and, and open finance, op open banking, generally speaking, and the schemes uh, accordingly are going to bring uh, lo lots of things in, in this regard. Mm -hmm. um, now, u u utilities, um, so, so and, and, and this goes from onboarding, you know, uh, you are a mobile company, you want to onboard a new customer, mm -hmm. uh, how to onboard, how to very quickly assess his uh, financial savviness in order to afford this or that contract that he's about to sign mm -hmm. and, and to do this in a way which is not, uh, you know, taking 
days right. to make mm -hmm. it happen, yeah. not say in weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, this needs to happen very quickly. And there are quick assessments that open finance mm -hmm. and the collaboration between the banks and fintechs can provide in order to make this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I, I, I think, you know, on, on the one hand, the financial institution will gain, but also uh, the utilities, because you mentioned utilities mm -hmm. are non-financial mm -hmm. players in general, mm -hmm. will be able to leverage uh, gaining more real-time support mm -hmm. from the financial players okay. with direct link, machine readable, mm -hmm. um, services that can be delivered online, real-time, mm -hmm. And uh, this is a, there is a good match mm -hmm. actually, uh, and and because of a variety of uh, new um, schemes that are popping up, mm -hmm. SPA, for example, I mentioned um, for utilities in particular, this is very interesting. It's a it's really compared to SEPA that has been uh, mm -hmm. um, in, in, in implemented uh, since uh, 2008. Well, now with a bank to bank or account to account transfer, mm -hmm. uh, there is a full-fledged payment methods for those players. And um, it goes directly with the banks rather than going through intermediaries like card, uh, card schemes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if I had to sum up what we, what we mentioned in, in this part two, um, you mentioned that open banking is really kind of a fuzzy notion and that open finance um, is where the future is. Um, and that covers all the different aspects of personal finance data necessary for the kind of three different major steps that you see. The first being helping people with day-to-day -day transactions and banking services, uh, also project financings for larger things like maybe uh, loans or mortgages, and then also uh, financial management. Did I get that right? I know there was a lot more in there, but <laughs> it's yeah, basic, I maybe like a basic term sum up. inclusion behind and financial inclusion management well. is about inclusion. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and education and financial literacy. This is very exciting. Definitely. Um, so we have another installment that we are going to be doing next week. And I look forward, Bruno, to speaking with you a little bit more about open banking in our third session. Thank you, Maya. <laughs>